Hey everyone, today I have a fourth generation Honda CRV that's 2012 to 2016, and today we are going to do the rear brakes. So the first thing to do with any brake job, obviously, is take off the tire because uh, to get the brakes, we need to take the tire off. So here you can see we are at the caliper. There's two 12 millimeter bolts. We're just gonna take those out. Now this one and these CRVs, you know, I find they're kind of springy. They're not the easiest calipers to pull out. They don't just pop out because the inner pad, as you can see here, it's still stuck in the piston. So it kind of holds itself. So anyway, once you wiggle it free as best you can, just pop out the pad. And then now I will put in my handy dandy tool. And if anyone is looking very closely, they'll see these pads still have quite a bit of life left on them. So why am I even doing this brake job? One would think there must be a good reason for me doing this because the pads on this side are actually pretty good. Well, you know what? This side's the easiest side to film, so let's go to the other side. Now take a look at this and tell me what you see because you know what? I see almost no pads left. That's right, nothing. Well, I guess there is a little something, but almost nothing. Anyway, back to the easy side to film. So now it's time to take off the caliper bracket. And by the way, I was just doing that in case anyone comments, you know, your pads had a lot of life left. The ones on the other side really did not. And most likely that is because of seized pins, which in this job, it actually was the seized pins. Now, once you have the bracket off, you can just take a hammer, tap out the pad, just like I did and then you will just pull out these clips that hold the pads in place. Now you can see here in the video, I have a wire wheel to get the caliper bracket clean, but I actually prefer brake caliper files. Believe it or not, it's just, I'm kind of being lazy today, so I wanna get this done quick. And it's such a nice day that I can have the garage door open, but I'm still wearing a mask, eye protection, and ear protection. So if you use power tools, please do that. Now, next up, what we have to do is get the pins out of this caliper. And as you can see, this pin came out not too bad. A little bit of wiggling and it's out. Take it to the wire wheel, give it a nice clean up there because you definitely do not want to put a rusty pin back in or a pin with full of corrosion because you know, you're just asking for trouble and you're asking it to be like how it was on the other side. So all I'm doing now is I'm just putting a little bit of caliper lube in there and then you can see there you go, I'm lubing up the nice clean new pin and then I will install it. Now there is a thing I wanna show you with these pins. Sometimes you can put them in and you can actually get some air in the one side. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, what the heck do you mean air? Well, watch this. I'm gonna twist it in and you can actually see it's pushing out. Take a look at that, it is pushing out. So how do you fix this? Well, sort of brute force, I guess. You just sort of gotta twist, wiggle, and just, you know, keep working it down. And what'll happen is you'll probably hear a couple air pops and the air will come out. Now, let's get to the other side. I was not able to move this pin much and you can see why. Look at all the rust. So whoever did this brake job last time did not do a good job cleaning it and now, well, I'm paying the price for it, I guess. So I'm using a ton of penetrating fluid and I'm slowly getting it to wiggle so I can work this pin out. But definitely you should never ever have this much rust in your brakes. If you have, it generally means either, well, I guess the seals are gone, which in this case, they're not gone, the seals are fine. Or it means someone kind of cheaped out on the brake job last time and just didn't lubricate things like they were supposed to. The good thing is though, with a little bit of elbow grease, we are able to get the job done and get the pin out. Now you can see it is corroded there, but we took the wire wheel, cleaned it up nice and good. And now what I'm doing is I'm just taking some brake clean actually, and I'm getting rid of the rust there, blew it out with some air. And now I'm putting some caliper grease in there. So just to protect it, we don't want it to be dry again like it was last time. So we definitely want to make sure that it is lubed up well. Now for this pin, if we take a closer look, we can see we actually do have a pretty good seal because just like the other side, it is bouncing in and out. So what are we gonna do? Well, this one, I'm gonna use a pair of uh, water pump pliers and there you can see, I'm just slowly squeezing it down. This one I wasn't able to do with my hand. I just didn't have enough force uh, you know, using my hand, so just use the tool to help. So next up, all we're gonna do is we're going to replace the brake hardware. Uh, but before we do that, we're gonna put some anti-seize to try to prevent you know, rust. It's gonna happen whether or not you put the anti-seize on or not, but the anti-seize does help to prevent, to prevent it in the long term. And then you can see here, I got a pair of pliers here and I'm using the pliers just to make sure that this brake hardware is fully seated. That is important because if it's not fully seated and flush with the caliper bracket, you are gonna have a tough time getting your pads in. And you know what? You don't want that because your pads can actually drag and stuff like that. So please make sure that they're fully seated. And that's one of the reasons why you gotta do a really good job cleaning. So now you're probably wondering why, A, you can't see what's in the screen, so we'll get a better shot in a minute. What I'm doing fighting with the actual caliper. Well, on these Honda CRVs, there is this springy thing that comes through the top right here. You can see I'm pulling it out now, finally with the pliers. I'm just gonna replace it. 
Now, to be honest, I think most of the time you don't even really have to replace them unless they're rusty or loose or broken or maybe even they're missing. But this kit came with one, so I figured, you know what, I may as well just replace it. May as well. It came in the kit, so why waste a good part? Next up is the rotors, and in order to get the rotors off, you're going to need a number two Phillips screwdriver. Here you can see I'm using an impact so it makes it a lot easier. You don't need to have an air impact. You can get uh, the ones you kind of whack with the hammer. And here you can see we've won with the rotor, which is pretty good because sometimes these rotors just don't want to come off. This time I think I got lucky and I won. Once you pop the rotor off the car, don't forget to change over the rubber plug because new rotors do not come with these plugs. At least I've never seen it anyway. So just pop it out of the old rotor and put it back in the new rotor. Then what you're going to do is just, I use some brake clean just to sort of clean it up, get rid of the brake dust, take a rag, give it a good wipe. And you can see I put some anti seize there and there you go proof that I put the rubber plug back in so now all you're gonna do is you're gonna put the rotor on you're gonna put the two screws in the number two Phillips screws and you're just gonna tighten them by hand they really don't have to be that tight don't go reefing on them don't go putting them in with an air gun they just have to be fairly snug they, all they do is just hold the rotor on and you know what the rotor is actually held on by the wheel which is held on by the lug nuts so you just don't have to worry they don't have to be that tight next up is the caliper brackets make sure you start threading the bolts by hand first whatever you do don't just put them in and jam them in with an impact make sure you're not cross threading them because you just don't want to do that then after that, what we're going to do is we're going to put the brake pads in. And there's a nice close-up shot. You can see there's the brake pads. Now the outer one, you can see I slid into the bracket. The inner one actually has to get clipped into the caliper. It's got like prongs on it, three prongs. So it takes a little bit of wiggling, but it will go in. Now, once you've won that battle, it's time to put the caliper. This is pretty much it. We're almost at the end. Make sure you start the bolts by hand just to prevent any cross threading. Then you're gonna put a little bit of anti-seize where the hub meets the wheel, put on all the bolts, torque it down and make sure you have a brake pedal. And what I mean by that is make sure you step on the brake and the pedal doesn't go to the floor before you drive it. Okay, so what tools did I use for the job? Well, I used a variance of different tools. For example, this is a 17 mil half inch swivel and this is a 17 mil uh, on, uh, on a 3 8 uh, to put the big bolts for the bracket, uh, caliper bracket back in. So really all you need is a 17 mil for the big bolts. You need a 12 mil for the small bolts. Those are the only two sizes you need. And then I used a pick, obviously, to pull the boots back. You saw when I was fighting with it in the vise there. And then uh, a little screwdriver to put the lube in for the pins. You definitely need a hammer. That is for sure. It'd be nice if you had a wire wheel. And then uh, number two Phillips to get the rotor off. And really, that's all you need. And then a couple, whoa, whoa, we got a, we got a socket running on us. There we go. Let's put it back. And then uh, just some pliers uh, to push the piston back in. This tool is great. But it is, uh, you know, you may not be able to get it and depend on how much life you have uh, left. It's really good for front brakes, but rear brakes, it's iffy just because they're a little bit smaller. So you can just set, set of pliers like this. Anyway, any questions, anything like that, let me know. Garage King over now.